So I just want to introduce you today to what is our detection system. And I want to talk about our ear and our brain. So humans have, remember when we started this conversation, I said we had three things, three of our senses were wave detectors. One was the sense of sight. One was the sense of hearing and the other was touch. So now we're, we've talked about our light, right? Radar lights coming in and everything and the different colors and how we see them. And so now we're gonna focus in on our hearing capabilities. Most people think that hearing is done in the ear, which is technically true, but it's not a complete statement. Our range of hearing, if we were to look at how much hearing a human does, our range is about 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So starting from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz is what humans can hear in. When you think about what the ratio is from the loudest to the smallest, it's about 10 to the power 12. So that's what, a million billion? So we can hear million billion pressure wave, the difference between them. Now, am I saying that we all can hear that? No. Most people can only hear between a certain ranges. And yes, as we get older, our hearing goes and it's complicated and all of that stuff. But in ideal circumstances, humans hear between 20 and 20,000 hertz. So given that, what is the range that limits that, that how, what's the smallest wavelength we can hear and what's the largest wavelength we can hear at room temperature. So if I'm saying that the frequency that a normal human can hear is between 20 and 20,000 Hertz, this is the minimum. And that's the maximum that humans can hear. Yes, and, and normal humans, I believe, can only hear up to like 13,000 hertz. We are limited on how much we can hear. And then as we go older, that goes down. So how do I figure out the lambdas for minimum and lambda for maximum? That actually is a very easy calculation. So we know speed equals distance over time or lambda f. So for the lower limit, I can write lambda at um, 20 hertz, that's how, that's how I would write it, as speed divided by frequency, which is 343 divided by 20. And lambda for upper limit, 20,000 hertz will be speed divided by frequency, 343 divided by 20,000. Can someone give me answers for this? 17? Approximately. And then what about for the other one? 343 divided by 20,000. Zero. 0 0.017, look at the range. Wavelength in between 0 0.02 all the way up to about 17 meters. That's what humans can hear. That's amazing. So we can hear about yay big, a wavelength coming in about this big. And we can also hear seven, what would 17 meters even be? So can you, can, Multiply that by 3.3 feet. So 17 times 3.3. 6, 56 feet. That's how, if a wavelength of 56 feet was coming towards us, we would still hear it. Well, give or take, right? As we go older, yes, it gets worse. That to me is fascinating. So a wavelength that's like really tiny, really high pitch, versus really low pitched. We can still hear them. Okay, 
Once we are fascinating by, fascinated by that, I can also tell you that there is another, another two definitions that we're gonna introduce you to. The first one is power. Power is the rate at which the work is done. And the other one is pressure, which is force per unit area. These both are going to become very important because I need both pressure and power to explain how sound is heard. I mean, amongst other things. Oh, it's a perpendicular. That's a good question. This means force perpendicular to the surface. That symbol. So when we are talking about sound traveling, we usually, instead of talking about forces, we talk about something called intensity. How intense is the sound? And that definition is power per unit area. And the unit of power is watt and area is meter squared. So the unit of intensity is power per unit area or watts per meter. So in order to find the power that the sound wave transmits, we have to find the intensity of the sound times it by the area of the eardrum. And pressure and area and intensity are related by this formula here. So as the pressure goes up one times, intensity goes up one times. When the pressure goes up two times, the intensity goes up four times. When the pressure goes up three times, the intensity goes up nine times because it's squared, right? 